Hi there, Andre here from Peak Motorcycles. Uh, today I'm back in the garage again and in today's video I'm going to be fitting these new sort of two finger short levers to my Honda CRF 300 Rally. This would be exactly the same for the CRF 300 Rally as it would be for the CRF 300L. Now maybe you're wondering why bother fitting different levers on it. To be honest the stock ones are fine, uh, they're made of alloy, I'm sure at some point they would break and snap but you know they, they, they do what they're there for. On the brake side in particular um, though you can't quite see it in the video, <clears throat> there isn't really isn't that much pull. So to do two finger braking is completely fine. Um, you can use your those two fingers and then the others, it just doesn't get in the way of anything. On the clutch side, it's a bit different um, in that the clutch lever, for me at least, it pulls all the way back to the grip. So if I'm trying to do that two fingers, I end up just squashing my fingers at the end. So for that, I thought I'd try these levers. So I did look for some that were specific to the CRF 300 uh, and I couldn't find any. I believe that Zeta or Zeta or any other pronunciation of that that you choose uh, do make some, but they are rather hard to find. So what I have here is some bargain price. You can see those uh, Honda CRF levers for a 250. So I believe that the brake one will just go straight on. On the clutch one, I believe it's a different size, so I'm gonna to have to drill it out. So this video is really just to show you how to, you can get some of these 250 levers. Some of you may have some of those already if you had a 250 before you had the 300. So the video is for how to adjust these and install them onto a CRF 300. Hopefully that all of that makes sense. So here we go. So before I start, I'll just give you a very quick look. So this one here is the brake lever. It's got CRF, I'm sure that's not approved by Honda uh, on it. They're made of alloy. They are spring loaded, so they will actually bend out that way. Uh, they have a fitting on there which I guess pushes it and there's the pivot hole. There's no grease on that. So I'm hoping that when I take out the, the previous pin, I will just measure it, make sure it's the right size and grease it up before I put it back together again. On the clutch side, uh, very similar. Um, this again, spring loaded, so it will, bang, it will spring back if need be. Um, on the underside, uh, we have the, uh, the little gland where the uh, cable will go. What I believe is that this hole is actually very slightly too small. Uh, I'm not sure whether that's just the anodizing finish uh, that's on that or whether it is actually just a fraction of a millimeter too small. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I will measure the size of that, I will measure the size of the bolt and then I will drill this out to be the right size. Hopefully all that makes sense. First of all I'm going to fit the brake lever. So if you saw my handguard installation video this bit will already be familiar. So it is a 10 millimeter nut on the bottom and a 10 millimeter bolt on the top. And to those of you who wince when I use an open spanner like this you have my apologies but hey it's what I have to hand. So that just comes off really easily. I think I did grease this up before I assembled it, so I'm kind of expecting it's going to be right. There we go. So actually the top one didn't need anything on it at all. I guess, I think it is actually threaded in there. So it is just the bottom nut you need to remove. Now looking at the angle of this, I am just going to loosen off the, um, uh, the clamp around the handlebar just so I can swivel it, so I can pull that, that bolt out of the top. And because of my hand guard down here, um, actually up against that, that will, that's actually stopping that from rotating any further. So my choices are to either remove the hand guard, but I think I'm just going to loosen off the, uh, the control pod there. And you can see that I've just undone that one screw. I think that will just about give me enough clearance to get that off. Okay, so that just comes off like that. And there we go, easy as that. Okay, so just to give you a side-by-side -side comparison of what's coming, what's coming, what's going. So this is what the two pieces look like. So as you can see, when I put them over the top of each other, um, that does line up pretty much perfectly there. Um, down here, it, is, it looks like it is a very slightly different shape, uh, but let's see. And if I take the pin out of the stock one, push that through there, so that is actually a pretty much a perfect fit for that. So I'm expecting this should just go straight back on. I am just going to grease it up uh, before I refit it, but I'll just go and do that now. Hopefully you can just about see that where it's going to go back in. It's going to put a layer of grease around the top and the bottom. And then just uh, a little bit inside where the pin is going to go, just to lube that up and then a little bit on the end. So that's just on the contact point for the piston uh, on the brake cylinder. I think that is all of the all of the moving parts um, that we have. To put this back in, it's going to ease that into the gap, and that actually seems like a pretty pretty good fit. That seems to be over the piston, and uh, the bolt just go in.
Okay, that's that one done. It's a pretty good fit. Now I'm just going to put the, uh, uh, the lock nut that goes underneath. As that, so the last things are just to do the clamp back up uh, and to do that back up as well. So there we go, that is the brake lever fitted. Hopefully you can see that on there. The action seems to be pretty good. And actually in terms of position, it's easily within, within my reach, still isn't coming back. Just for doing two fingers, that all seems to be good. So that's the easy one. Uh, now to go on to the other side and to do the clutch lever. So this one very similar, it's got this pin that goes through with a nut on the bottom. So I'm just gonna try and take the nut off first. Now to take the nut out of the top. So I think it is this bolt that is different between the CRF 300 and the CRF 250, but we shall see. There we go, that is clear. I don't know if you can see this, but on the lever that needs to go in, that's the bolt that has to go through. And as you can see, it is just snagging. So this bolt on the CRF 300L, if you just measure that through there, I don't know if you can quite read that, but believe me, that says eight millimeters. So what I need to go now is to go and get the new lever and drill out that hole to eight millimeters and then it should fit to the bike. What I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna take out the bolt that goes through here. So that's just an Allen bolt on the end of there, pull all that out. Um, I then also need to take this off to release this arm. And um, what that will do then do is just give me just this end piece, which will be much easier to clamp. There we go, so that's that pin out. Next thing to do is to remove this pin through here. comes out of that side. This is always the bit that makes me think something's going to spring off. So this is actually the bit that covers the, the spring that's in there. There we go. So pull that out. There we go. So now it all comes apart. So now that is one piece like that, which should be a lot easier to clamp. That's the theory at least. So to line this up, put a seven millimeter drill bit, uh, which is the same size as the hole. So that's a seven millimeter. So that's, I know that's definitely lined up. So I'm just going to clamp that in place. Yeah, so I'm pretty pleased with that. It's not even touching the sides there. So I'm going to switch that out now for the eight millimeter bit. Okay, so that should just go straight in through that hole like that. I'm just going to put a little bit of cutting compound on the end of that just to help it go through the, the metal cleanly. Yep, so now I'll just take that off and check that that fits. That's all cleaned up now, and this is the bolt uh, from the bike. So now I'm gonna put that in, that is actually a pretty good fit. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tidy that up. So if you can see on there, there is still a very, very slight little edge. So I'm just gonna get some wet and dry sandpaper. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take that off um, and that should just clean that up completely. And then it's really good to go back on the bike. Pretty smooth on there. Not really any on that side. I'll just give it a bit of a wipe. There we go. Pretty good. Last thing I'm going to do is just make a bit of this into a tube. Just give it a quick rub around on the inside. And you can see that. Just it's not really a high friction surface, so it doesn't really need it. But while it's off, might as well make it as tidy as possible. And obviously, I'll grease this before I before I put it back on the bike. So yeah, that's pretty smooth all over. There's no rough edges. Um, it's certainly smooth through the middle. And I think when that goes in there with some grease, that's pretty much a, a perfect fit. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna assemble this again. I'm gonna pop that in there. Then it was the spring which went into those two holes. Like that. Okay, so I just need to hold that open long enough uh, just to get that screw started. So what this does do is give you some adjustment on the lever. Okay, so that's back how it was. So now to put the bolt back through here. That piece goes on that side. And then this screws in from the other side. And then on the other side of that goes that piece. Okay. There we go, that is all back together again with a, an eight millimeter hole in the end. I'm just gonna go back up, fit that to the bike, 
hope that that lines up with the cable and then we're all done. Hope you can see that. So this is where the old one comes out. So I'm just going to ease that out of there and bring that back. So what doesn't help is having these hand guards on. I'm going to loosen that off. There we go. Right, so now that's just dropped out. That's good. So I'm going to look under there. You can see there's the little uh, button. So I'm just going to move the cable around like that and that should just pop out. There we go, so that's the old lever. If you want to see the two of these side by side, you can see it is a fair bit shorter at the end. Hopefully everything else will line up. So I'm just going to try and get that cable in here. That went in pretty easily and hopefully will come around. There we go. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to grease up all of these surfaces um, before I pop that back in there, but that actually looks like it's a, it's a pretty good fit. Putting a grease on that. Also in the hole, I have polished it up so it should all be fine, but um, I don't plan on taking this out that often, especially now I know I have to remove the hand guard. So getting as much grease on there to make sure that that uh, smooth operation would be great. So I'm just gonna pop that into there, the grease on the bolt as well. And this bolt is going back into that hole. There we go. That's actually a pretty nice operation there. Last thing to do is just to put the other nut on the underside. And there we have it. There's like almost no play in that. That's, that's pretty good. Very last things to do is to clean that up a bit. There's quite a lot of grease seems to have gone everywhere. So I'll clean that up. Put that boot back over the top. That seems to fit reasonably nicely. And then the last thing is just to put my hand guard back in place. And it's all done and back together again. I'll still probably carry uh, the two levers around with me as spares. That's my video on how to install some CRF 250 clutch and front brake levers to a Honda CRF 300L or Honda CRF 300 Rally. The brake side was pretty straightforward, it's just bolt on, bolt off. You just need to loosen things up a bit so you can get to it. A bit more tricky on the clutch side because you've got to drill the hole out from 7mm to 8mm to get the bolt to fit. And actually to be able to get the old lever off I had to remove my hand guards. But if you don't have these hand guards uh, or you have a different ones where they're actually going to a different place, you may not need to do that. But yeah, it, the whole thing took me end to end, including all the filming and setting up the cameras, uh, about an hour. And I think if you're doing it yourselves, it'll probably be 15 to 20 minutes. But yeah, uh, next time I'm out and about and riding, I'll give you some feedback on how the levers are. But my hope is, particularly for the clutch side, is that it's now just much easier to do two-fingered and I can actually keep my other two fingers clear on the outside. So I hope this has been interesting and useful. If it has, please like and subscribe and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.